The Sunday Baroque podcast is made possible by WSHU and the Friends of Sunday Baroque. You can find out more about the Friends of Sunday Baroque and find out how to become one yourself by visiting our website, sundaybaroque.org, under the Contact tab. Julien Chauvin is a violinist who specializes in Baroque music and has studied with some of the world's prominent early music experts. And in 2003, he was a prize winner at the International Early Music Competition in Bruges. He's also played in many of the leading European Baroque ensembles and has founded several period instrument ensembles too. Julien Chauvin joins me via Skype to speak about his passion for Baroque music and his 2020 recording of concertos by Antonio Vivaldi as part of the Vivaldi edition. Well, thank you very much for speaking with me. Welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you. So first things first, though, we're speaking at a pretty unusual time in human history during a global pandemic. And so I just want to check in and see how are you doing? Are you okay? Well, I had some time to to be sure that I was okay, indeed. And uh, these, these three months were quite long, quite long for us, uh, of course. Uh, we, we had to stay home, uh, to think a lot, actually, uh, to practice some, some, but actually not so much. And, uh, and, and, you know, when you practice an instrument, to practice alone has not so much sense. And I, I, what I miss is the, the contact with, with other musicians, of course with the audience, but to, to, to play with others. And uh, the problem is the the next month will also be a little empty. So of course we are just um, praying and uh, and um, making things happen uh, sooner than that uh, that we want. Yeah, yeah. It's very concerning to think about too what concert going will be like in the future. Yes. Well, I I am. I, I my state of mind was quite uh, different. Um, because at some point we, we thought that uh, we, we wouldn't play until January <laughs> next year. And then at, at some point uh, uh, we, we thought we could play this summer. And then it, it, it's changing actually um, all the time. And now I'm starting to be more positive. And uh, I think um, the crisis actually here uh, in France is, uh, is almost, almost uh, done, almost finished. So... Uh, people should recover, and and uh, what uh, what people should understand is that they they should really go back to the theaters, go back to the um, the, the, the the places where they sh- they can meet others and they can listen to concert or theater or dance, and the 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 videos now it's it should be finished, you know they they have to get a new link with the the musicians and the artists, so. I'm really looking forward to to this. Well, yes, I agree. (laughs) So tell me about your start, personally, your start in music. When did you start music lessons as a child? When did you know that music was your life's work? Did you actually start on the violin? Well, actually, it was it was a little bit before this. I, I had the great luck that my mother, when she was pregnant, she she learned for me the piano. (laughs) <laughs> and and uh, and actually uh, the, the belly is the best position to to listen to the piano. <laughs> so actually she I think she she really uh, gave me something um, before I was born. Um, uh, not a gift, but uh, just uh, the joy of music and the the, the sense. And uh, and very quickly, even if they were they were my parents were not uh, professional musicians. They, they gave me the, the taste and um, I started with the cello when I was four and uh, I thought maybe the, the teacher was not good enough so I, I stopped and then, then I started the piano which is my basic of course and it should be um, the basic, actually. It's, it's a very good bass and, and then I started quite late the, the violin when I was nine and it was a, a big crush with a, with a, a French violinist which I saw playing in festivals in the summer, and and my dream was just uh, to to learn with this person, and uh, which I managed to do, and um, 
and he accompanied me, and uh, that's why I, I, I went on. Wow. So, but so how? I mean, so you were just a little kid when you really sort of latched onto music as your as your thing, as your career. Yes, 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 definitely. Wow. I, 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 I'm the last children of three, you know, and uh, of course, I, I, I think I, I prefer to be with aged people. I mean, more, more older than me, and uh, so I went a lot to to concerts when I was really young to Barem Boy when, when he was in Paris and to and to so many, and it it probably helped me to to make my tests uh, <laughs> a little more open. So I I guess this explains too that if you were that uh, certain that that young I mean you have founded several musical ensembles and that's certainly extraordinary for any musician um, so I would specifically like to hear about Le Concert de la Loge yes. which you established in 2015 is that correct yes yes, yes so what's the focus what's the mission of this group of all the many groups. <laughs> It's it's I formed it in in five five years ago with musicians with whom I played for for 15 years actually for for very long and uh, um, my, my idea was was to use the history the history of music and some basic uh, of the the French music history and to make uh, links and bridges uh, between the history and the history of music and the but patrimoine, so the, the, the places, um, uh, and especially in Paris, because Paris, at the end of the 18th century, was a big, big center of, uh, of the editing, of the, um, editing the music, you know, the, the, the writing. And um, I wanted to, to bring uh, life, to bring to life uh, some music uh, which was uh, quite unknown from French composers, uh, of the classical period around Joseph Haydn life. And that was a, a big starting point f for me to, to use this, um, this, uh, this aspect of the musical life in Paris. And, and you know, in, in history, you have these um, giants and uh, these giants like uh, Mozart, Beethoven, and Haydn, they, they hide, they hide so many, so many others. Uh, gifted, so many other gifted composer and touching and uh, and and um, and and good composers, and uh, sometimes I think it's a pity to to forget about them. So that's why in in, in the CDs I, I I recorded recently around this uh, this uh, full uh, Paris symphonies from Haydn, I wanted really to to bring to light um, this uh, French. Uh, like Marie Alexandre Guénin or Rigel or uh, Gluck or uh, Gretry and, and so many that uh, no one heard, even us <laughs> musicians. And it's very important for us, for, for, for our heritage. So um, that was the base. And, and I took, of course, the name of a very famous orchestra, Le Concert de la Loge Olympique. This was created um, in 1783 in Paris. And it, it, the, the funny thing is, at this period, they were playing and performing only uh, only new music. They, they didn't have this notion of a repertoire. They, they, they were uh, always creating music. The, the music was always fresh. And that's something that was uh, very, that interested me um, a lot. So that's why we, we made a lot, a lot of research about this orchestra that was maybe um, directed in, uh, by uh, the, the French uh, Chevalier de Saint-Georges, you know, the, 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 the black uh, violinist and, um, and very famous. So all this is, 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 is a great story that we, we start to bring um, <laughs> to life. Well, that's wonderful. But, and, and yet here you are, though, you have just now recorded... Not a Frenchman and not an unknown composer. The, exactly. The 63rd Vivaldi edition album. And I understand it's the eighth violin or eighth volume, rather, of violin concertos in this ongoing Vivaldi edition project. And I also heard that you are the first French violin soloists, soloist to participate in the Vi uh, Vivaldi edition. So how did that come about? That's wonderful. I, it's, it's just... Um... The, a great luck, actually. And uh, of course, uh, Suzanne Orlando, who is the, the artistic director of, um, of this marvelous edition, I, I met her actually a long, long time ago when uh, in 2002, 
uh, 18 years ago, I was recording um, an, uh, an opera from Vivaldi, uh, La Verita in Cimento, and, uh, mm. and with, with many amazing singers that I was discovering, among, among them uh, Philippe Jarowski. And so I knew very early about this, this edition. And uh, the, the time passed and the, the years passed, and I think she, she asked many um, Italian, of course, to, 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 to perform this music. Uh, I don't know if it's a good or bad idea. It's it's it, it's um, they know how, for sure how to play this music, but um, French uh, people can also perform Italian music or German music. So, so I think she she made a, a big step, uh, a step big step to uh, asking um, French ensemble and French violinists. And for this, I I, I I'm so lucky indeed. Ah. So tell me about the six concertos on this recording. What makes them special? What what do you and your colleagues in the ensemble especially love about them? Well, this 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 um, this volume is a little special because I I, I chose them from a selection that was um, made, but I had to to ha to add some some uh, some more concerti to finish the volume. And the idea was that um, Vivaldi, you know, he, he composed for any kind of music, so for, for trio, sonatas, for concerti, for opera, for church music. And, um, and Vivaldi, he doesn't have, um, he doesn't have a, a language different for each kind of music, you know. He, mm -hmm. he, he has his personal ideas for any kind of music. And when we, when I, I read the, the music, the concerti, then I, I understood that um, he could he could use the same music, the same movements, uh, in operas as well in concerti, and that's a very very important um, aspect. Uh, it's that uh, uh, music without words, uh, like concerti, uh, no text, no words. Um, the the, the 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 musician has to find words he has to to create um atmospheres and to create situations and to to make a story of it and um and then i could make the parallels because uh, because we find some movements in the concerti that are used in in the operas so of course we have some indications of texts uh that he reused and uh, the, the and the theater, of course, uh, at the beginning of the um, 18th century, the, the the opera, the theater, the stage, um, is is so important. is 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 the main the main um, the main um, genre. And uh, when we perform this this concerti, we always always um, were thinking uh, of being on a stage, on an opera stage, and not in a concert hall, you know? The concert hall doesn't really exist at this time. It's a very modern idea. So, uh, of course, uh, we, we, we had to have imagination a lot, a lot, and to, to, make, uh, to make a text appear out of the music. Do you have a favorite or a couple of favorites of the concertos on this? Well, um, <laughs> there are so there, there, there are, I, I, I must say that they are all quite good, um, but so well made. The, the C major opening is very impressive, very very um, technically demanding. The B minor is so special because he ha it's, it has uh, this battle at the, the third movement, and the second movement is the very uh, uh, world famous now, uh, Vedro con mio diletto, the, the aria that uh, sing all the countertenors. And uh, at the end, the, the G minor um, is a little more simple in the facture, but but so so efficient. So yes, there are some. <laughs> all, all is good. <laughs> you also play a couple of pretty extraordinary instruments. Would you talk a little bit about your violins, please? Yes. Well, well, it, it, it was it was uh, also um, a great luck because I have a good friend, uh, Italian um, Italian uh, instrument dealer. You know, he's a collectioning. Um, he's a collector. He's a collector of uh, 
Italian instruments. And um, when I told him about this this project, um, he told me, uh, yes, I could get this violin and this violin or this one. And and then at some point he spoke to me about um, uh, an instrument from Pietro Guarneri, the the one of the family who went um, to Venice. And I I actually uh, found out that he went to Venice the year. Uh, of the composition of the of the concertis in 1721, and so it's it's totally in this period, um, and the instrument was was uh, was absolutely um, beautiful, and what, what was a great um, joy to to put on this instrument the original setting with with gut strings, which means a little less pressure and which allowed the instrument. To sing, to sing, um, and not to be pressed uh, to to because you know the pitch goes high and high, you know, uh, during the, the 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 years. And why? Because we want more projection, we want more sound, more powerful, and and, and actually it destroys a bit of the of the the quality of the sound of the harmonics. And by going down in the in the pitch and with using uh, gut strings. It was just a big relief for the instrument to to sound and to to resonate. So this is then yet a different instrument than the ones that you normally play. Is that what you're saying? Then? Absolutely, absolutely. Ah. I, just, I just got it for the recording, and wow. and I prefer because uh, when I saw the price of the instrument, I couldn't anyway <laughs> get <the> insurance <laughs> more than one a month. <laughs> That well, that was sort of one of my my other questions too. The two, I believe, you play two instruments: a sixteen seventy and an eighteen thirty nine. Those are sort of your normal yes, instruments absolutely. that you play. Yes. And I think you know, an instrument, musical instrument. Um, of course, there is a level at which you know they're all fine instruments, but yes. really they have to be brought to life by the right player. And it's a very personal sort of thing, you know, the kind of relationship and collaboration, if you will, that you have with them. So what about what about these two instruments that you usually play, even though you're not playing them on the Vivaldi CD? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, both are Italian. Uh, the other that my my friend, my, my Italian friend, uh, uh, lends me, it's, uh, it's an also Italian from 1839. Of course, it, it's an alchemy uh, be, between the player and, and, and the instrument. And you have to meet at some point. Oh, and of course, it happens. Um, uh, I try several other instruments before uh, choosing this one. And um, uh, in, in with such ancient instruments, actually, you you should you should let them have the power. Mm -hmm. You should not uh, <laughs> be the one who says how they should sound. You know, you, it's like the bow. You learn from the bow, but you don't teach your bow. You know, uh, you you really have to 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 take what they give. And um, in this case. Uh, uh, the, for example, the, the, for this violin, this Guarneri, uh, on which I recorded the Vivaldi, it has uh, on the high register, um, on the E string, some totally um, uh, magic, magic sound that, that actually you cannot force, uh, you cannot play so loud with it, but you have really to be, to be um, listening to it and to be so delicate that of course, I had to change uh, some of my playing, you know, and I, have, I had to adapt, and that's also wonderful. So what did you use for a bow with the Guarneri? So for the bow, I, I used, I used um, a, a magic bow <laughs> that I have, <laughs> which, is, which is also a bow from, uh, I'm lucky, it's a bow from the 18th century, uh -huh. and, and also which has uh, some, some good uh, vibrations. Uh, okay, literally and figuratively, I guess. Yes. <laughs> um, so tell me, I, I want to just double back a little bit because I find this as, a, as something that is really important to me as well. And you mentioned before that you, you and your group really seek out and appreciate some of the less well-known Baroque yes. uh, composers. So are there some, I mean, you named a few and you named a few also who were sort of like classical era, but are yes. there Baroque composers or even earlier composers that you've sort of stumbled on that you think these are people we really should know about as, as listeners, as music lovers? Or do you want to, do you want to make a, a case for uh, any, any musicians that you've discovered? 
de definitely uh, in 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 the baroque area um, since 50 since 50 years many have have been dis di has been discovered for sure but um, every day we can discover more and um, in the italian italian area someone like scarlatti scarlatti or caldara these two these two <laughs> people uh, composed so much so much and um, of course when you have a, a lot of pieces a lot of oratorios operas you you can be a little lost and it's difficult to say to a promoter i will do this uh, unknown opera of Scarlatti or Caldara. And of course, it's difficult to sell. It's difficult. It's, it's not uh, not Cedificado or Cosi, you know, or, or uh, the, the Julio Cesare or whatever. So, of course, it's difficult for us to, to, to convince uh, theaters, promoters. But in, in, in all these operas, you, you, you have such, such amazing, unique uh, areas. And uh, what I'm doing now, um, exactly uh, this afternoon with Philip Jarowski, um, areas from oratorios from Scalati, it's, it's just, just unbelievable that uh, no one knows about them. <laughs> and uh, so th the work still is, is very, very great to, to do. And with your group, because you mentioned uh, Chevalier de Saint Georges, do you yeah. do you do any of his uh, violin did, music? Yes, we did some of some of his works, some of his concerti for violin, yeah. uh, which are very good. Uh, some of the, of his symphony about uh, his operas, they are almost all all lost. Yeah. Um, but the figure of this this uh, this man um, who was uh, military. Uh, who was um, a musician and uh, who was um, a big um, big champion of uh, how do you call it so um, uh, escrim you know the um, uh, oh fencing fencing he fencing was, yes mm -hmm. he, he was also a great fencing master and this these three carries at the same time um, made this this uh, this this life uh, exceptional. And we are trying uh, actually to to do um, a documentary uh, about him. And uh, oh, and also of course I, I played some of his quartets, which are also very good. So what other projects, just in general, what other things are you thinking about? What other plans do you have for the future? What what's the thing that's sort of keeping you? Uh, you know, keeping you up at night here. <laughs> well, well, in in the in the in the Baroque area, I we we, we have in in three months a, a great gala, a Vivaldi gala, with uh, with four singers, uh, which will will tour in Spain and, and France, and that's that's um, a, a great a great program. And next year we we will. Uh, there is a CD coming out of the the Haydn Haydn Stabat Mater, and uh, uh, it will be the end of our cycle of the French uh, Paris Symphony from from Haydn. But then we add this Stabat Mater, which which was a, the a bestseller actually. The, the, this was with Pergolesi, the, the the piece the most copied. Uh, in Europe uh, at the end of the 18th century. And Pergolesi won, of course. He won because it's, it's, it's more public. It's, it's more, more touching um, immediately. But the, this Tabat matter, this Haydn, we found a quite special version, which is a Parisian version. So we decided to record and to play this piece as the French discovered it. So not like Haydn wrote it in Vienna, not, not with the same uh, words, the same uh, music, the same dynamics and the same order, but how the French people, um, how the French people discovered it and played it. And we made a, an edition even for, for, for it. And uh, so it, it, it will be out um, just next year. And for us, that's a big, uh, big, big issue. And for the French repertoire, we, we have a, a great program uh, coming uh, next year. 
with Véronique Jans and uh, Sandrine Pio, with the two, um, the two great figures of um, the feminine figures of the opera at the end of um, the 18th century. One was for the dramatic um, side and one from uh, the more gallant, gallant side. And um, they were rival, the, the name of the city will be uh, rival, you say rival? And yes, rival. Mm -hmm. Rival. Uh, so the, the the title of the city will be uh, rival between these two women, who who were the the, the queens of Paris. Hmm. Hmm. Sounds great. My hope. Well, I have been speaking with violinist Julien Chauvin via Skype about his recording with his period instrument group, Le Concert de la Loge. It is the 63rd volume in the Vivaldi edition series. Thank you very much for speaking with me. Thank you so much. Be well. All the best to you. Thank you.